Well, on uh, SME this morning, we have a work of art, who is an artist, by the way, Aye Vera, who embodies the essence of creation far beyond the traditional concept of an artist. She's here to talk about what she does. It is great to have you. You are welcome. It's good to be here. That's a map of Africa, by the way. Yes, yeah, is it, it is. It is. Oh, okay. How long have you had that tattoo? It's been years now. Hmm. Yeah, it's been years now. Did you draw yourself? No, I didn't draw. <laughs> Trust me, I corrected the guy. You correct? <laughs> oh, yes. You had to. You had to. Great yeah. to have you. So, how long have you been doing this as an artist? And since I can remember, it's a gift I grew up with. Mm. Yes. And how did you discover it? Discover it? Mm. Let's say do like cartoons now. I mm. watch them and I just thought about it. I could replicate this. I tried it and it came out perfect. Mm. And then did you get um, some sort of guardians from your parents, your words and all that? Did they, did they support you? Guardians, yes. My dad specifically. He's a surgeon. Oh. And yeah, he had this skill too. I watched like his previous drawing when he showed us his old papers and stuff like that. And I thought about it. Why don't I just do this to impress him? I ended up replicating it. Then he said, ah, she's good. Why don't you do this? Mm. Yeah. And then he didn't want you to go into the medical line or anything. He was Law, okay with do. you. Law. I was Law. that smart. <laughs> yes. And how were you able to balance it up while you were doing you while we were studying that you still had the passion for this and you were doing it? Yeah, I had the passion for this so much that I had to like switch courses. I'm into management now and I took this full time. You had to switch? Yes. That wasn't easy, I, I, I would perceive, to say. Oh, it was Anything easy for you. Good is not easy, trust okay, me. Okay, good. Yes. Now, uh, you have been, how long have you been doing it professionally? It's been years now, 20, 24 years. Mm. And, yeah. and, you know, we are in a country where some people will say that the appreciation of art is not where it should be. If how we would don't you, how take would you it, describe that? If we don't take it there, how will it get there? Everybody mm. keeps saying art is not valued and this and that, but you have to place value on it. Mm. That's what I do for my pieces. What dictates the value of art? The process, the maker. The maker, I like that, the process. The art itself. Mm. Yes. And, and since you've been doing this, is it something that is commercially viable on a large scale? Yes, it is. On a large scale, like places like hotels, they, mm. they get art pieces. And mm, even, like, everybody needs art pieces. It's decorative. Not everybody it needs it, but it is beauty. that does everybody know that they need it. So that's the thing. Because, like you said, beautification, when you talk of aesthetics and all of that, those yes. are beautiful things. And then we are a country that is culturally, culturally rich. You're talking about our art pieces that, you know, a number of people, even they were taken out of it. But the thing is that we don't take care of our art pieces as much as even those in the West take care of them. The ones that we're taking here, they take care of them. Some of them they send back. We don't give them as much uh, respect as those others do. Okay, what I do for my art pieces now is I don't stay glued to the past. Yes, they didn't give them respect and all of that. I assume it has nothing to do with me and this generation of art mm. pieces. And the way I do my work, yeah, I make them with quality, not just in quantity. So you can't okay. ruin it when cleaning. Yes, and it stands the test of time. So they're extremely valuable. And that's it, with test of time, because that's also one major thing when it comes to art. appreciating art and when it comes to art and all of that. But with the proliferation of technology, you have now digital artists. Man, that was scary. <laughs> so, so I, look, I've, I've even felt like, so are these people really artists? Because do they really have talent? You don't because, want to know. You know, I, look, I, I really, this is, this is a personal question. This is one that is also disturbing me because uh, to what, where do we draw the line? Now this, so what are your thoughts? This is a good question. For us traditional artists, we, we, we tend to look at this normal. Like, you guys have the cheat code. Technology, mm. you don't even have to buy paint. You don't have to buy brushes. Yeah. Everything is in there for you. You get So I, I didn't used to consider them artists, but then I thought about myself. Maybe my mind was even a little bit boxed. I don't Boxing. open my mind and mm. see that technology could even assist my you. Business. I would love to explain more in detail, but my process still is a secret. Now, but, but does that mean that um, when it comes to value, generally, how much value are digital art, is digital artistry at the same level? Do people generally, let's look at how people appreciate them or how people value them. It almost got there. It, we all heard of this NFT stuff that went on. Bam. Yes, yeah, like it almost took traditional art out of the market, but I, I didn't really think it would stand the test of time. But if it's coming to like the pricing on, on it that the value, like it took it high. Digital artists, they do pay them more too, but at the same time, it's off the market now. Mm. Traditional art is back there and it's more valuable because for original I, pieces. Like yeah. digital pieces, you could just print them out and stuff like that. Yeah. Original pieces is single, it's made for the buyer. 
Wonderful, because I would feel that what someone puts in their blood, sweat, and all of that into a work would have more value than picking up a, a system or a tab and, a, I mean, picking up something and then I just put in impute commands and then they automatically come up. Oh, you make it sound so easy. <laughs> Okay, let me not just say anything <laughs> about that. But let's see, as um, running such a business in Nigeria, in the climbs, as it were, what are the peculiar challenges that you've had to face and surmount? Like what you said earlier, like convincing people that they need this. Me, in my case, I didn't have to do much convincing because of the image I've already built. I've won several competitions. I have, I have my awards. So, yes, they even to like get a piece from me is an honor now. Yes, so yes, getting them to get the piece is a different case, but them knowing that what you do is valuable and you are valuable, they will get the piece. Now, putting your own process as an artist, what, what, how, do you, how, do you, how do you create your pieces? Where do you get inspiration from? I don't do inspiration. I feel Ooh. inspiration is copying. Okay, talk, talk, talk to me about it. copy creation, is... I create. I don't really wait for inspiration. I just go how I feel. Break it down. When you say, so, so, so for the layman to say you don't wait for inspiration. No. How do you, so, so, how do you do what you do? I just do it. Like, mm, so you don't I think of, do so if you were, what, 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 what kind of pieces do you, do you maybe specialize in? What do you like doing? What do you like, like drawing? What do you like painting? There's no specific. It could be abstract. It's be extremely realistic. Mm. And it could be sci-fi. Like every, I go everywhere. Like you said, Africans, we have our traditional pieces. So I still, do, I still move that way. My art is diversified. Mm. It's not boxed in a particular category. In a particular yes. category. Yes. Now, let's, let's talk about exhibitions. Have you had a solo exhibition before? A solo exhibition soon. Soon? Yes, but I've had, a, I've had lots of exhibitions, but a solo exhibition very soon. Do you, um, when do you, do you why, why, is it that, why is it that you've not yet had a solo exhibition? Is there anything that you're hoping to get to, or anything you're hoping to reach and, uh, you know, that will make it possible for you to have a solo exhibition? No, it's already possible. It's in place. Mm. It's in place, yeah? In place, yes. Wonderful, wonderful. So what, what lesson would you have to somebody who, you know, like you said, digital artists and all of that, to somebody who is coming up, who wants to, are artists made or are they born? How would you, what's your take on that? Um, <laughs> it's a collaboration. It's a collaboration, yes. yeah? You think it's something someone can learn without so, any sort of affinity or proclivity, as it were? Yes, definitely, because I wasn't taught. Hmm. Definitely, you could teach yourself. Hmm. Yes. And and then you could also learn from somebody. You, know, you could also right? learn from someone. Yes. Okay. So what final words do you have there? If you if somebody who wants to learn and grow up with art, as it were, maybe a kid, somewhere where you were at, what what word would you give to such a person? Like, how do you want it? How do you feel? Hmm. Get the surface and make it real. <sighs> you rehearsed that. Nah. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> you sure? You've done any form of poetry or something? <laughs> Uh, it's, in, it's natural. It's natural. <laughs> yes. Well done. It's, uh, it's, it's been great talking to you and, of course, uh, with all you it's, do. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, keep up doing what you're doing. We have breakfast for you if you don't mind. Oh, thank you very much. Hope you don't mind. I do. I have to be on my way. Okay, you know what happens. You just come and look at it, uh -huh. how it looks, and just tell us your thoughts on the look. And it looks perfect. Let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, let's...